Hey friends, I hope you're having a great day. I've got Barrett just kind of chilling behind me. So you've probably seen the silly reaction video that Jordan and I did to the pictures of hiking, backpacking, and camping fails. And in that, I kind of described this ongoing trend in specifically YouTube hiking videos that are all about mistakes and things you're doing wrong, whether it's gear you're using wrong or a mistake that could seriously cost you on the trail. And along with it goes that ridiculous looking thumbnail where the host of the channel is just making this shocked face, whatever you want to describe it as, in the foreground. And then in the background, there's this obscure picture with arrows pointing to something saying, no, stop, wrong, don't. You've seen this all over your YouTube suggestions feed, I'm sure. I definitely did the same thing though with the title for this video and the thumbnail that probably made you click on it. It is not clickbait though. Today I am going to actually share this one mistake that really kind of stands out in my time hiking and backpacking. I've made a lot of mistakes in my outdoor adventures, but this one I think you can really relate to. And it actually has nothing to do with misusing a piece of gear or making a bad safety decision while out on a hike. It's listening to other backpackers. I'll explain, but first let me preface, there is nothing wrong with sharing tips and tricks and talking about gear together and just swapping information and experiences. There's also nothing wrong with changing up your routines or changing up the gear you use, learning, growing, whatever. That is all great. What I mean when I say it was a mistake listening to other backpackers is taking the unsolicited advice from that guy who really isn't looking to help you but just kind of lecture you and make you feel kind of stupid and like you're doing everything wrong not listening to that and taking that to heart because there's a lot of that out there. Um, and if you've never met this guy in person on the trail, trust me, at some point you will and many more like him. You'll also meet a lot of uh, folks like him online, but it's been uh, mostly in person in my personal experience that I've encountered that guy. And uh, when I first started out, I used to let that really get to me, especially when it came to the gear I was using, really letting those harsh opinions about why are you using that piece of budget gear that really sucks, uh, kind of make me feel like, well, it works for me, but maybe I need to change it. The biggest mistake part of this was wasting so much time feeling like I am stupid, I'm not doing things the right way. I have to run out and drop a bunch of money on this gear item or that, or I have to completely change up my routine to be like this experienced backpacker. Otherwise, you know, I just suck. And maybe you've been in that situation. Maybe you've felt that way before. I really hope that new and beginning backpackers watching this take this to heart. Part of the beautiful thing of backpacking is learning from your little mistakes when it comes to gear and learning what works for you, getting your own routines together, your own systems together that are really tailored for you so that you can hike your own hike. I know a lot of these videos and the content out there on the subject of hiking mistakes and gear you should be using this way instead. I know a lot of it comes from a good place of just wanting to share what that person has learned. There's also a handful of content out there that sort of like that guy on the trail that wants to lecture you about everything. It's not so much meant to help you grow, learn, whatever, but more make you feel like a fool. And definitely don't let that stuff bother you or get to you. And again, I'm speaking mostly to those new beginning backpackers so that you don't get discouraged because it really is discouraging when you meet that experienced or seasoned hiker backpacker whatever 
and they kind of make you feel like you're doing everything wrong rather than encouraging you and taking interest in the way that you do things, you get the idea. And you know what? Sometimes us experienced hikers and backpackers need a little reminder that it's okay to hike your own hike. Do what works for you. Use this piece of gear or don't. Sometimes we need that little reminder, especially when there's the newest trend in backpacking, the newest uh, thing that you should be doing instead and kind of pressures us to change things that already work fine for us and probably don't need to be fixed if they're not broken. Sort of anecdotally, but a piece of gear that I get a ton of just suggestions about is this guy. I love this thing, but the general consensus is that this is too bulky, too heavy, you shouldn't be using this, you need to be using a smart water bottle instead, and you know, screw your little Sawyer filter onto that and filter your water that way. I used to do that. That was the first system I tried because that's what everybody raved about. That's what all of the most popular backpacking figures, whatever, the blog posts on how to backpack, how to filter your water, all of them suggested that that's the way you ought to do it and that these are too heavy, too bulky, you know, you need to ditch this. Like I said, I tried that and it just doesn't work for me. I hate it. I absolutely love my Nalgene bottle, but especially in person, I get told all the time that I shouldn't be using this and that the better way is the smart water bottle. Um, and to that, you know, I just have to laugh and be like, okay, thanks, but no thanks. I love this thing. It has far more uses for what I need when it comes to my backpacking trips. I like to put hot water in this and heat up my sleeping bag. I like to put a um, one of those little whisk balls that you use to shake up like a protein shake. I like to put that in here. It won't fit through the mouth of a smart water bottle. And then like shake up my coffee or if I have like a latte mix or just drink mix in general that I can drink as I go. I love that this allows me to do that, to make drinks that I like, and it's also easier for me to filter water. I use one of the, you probably can't see it, it's somewhere back there in that mess. I like to use the CNOC, Canoc, whatever, water bladder as my kind of filtering bag, and it's way easier to filter water into this wide mouth than into the smart water bottle. And they have this neat little silicone thing that keeps it from just like totally spilling all over your face. So this, this works for me and I love it, but especially in person on the trail, somebody will notice it in my side pocket and tell me, well, you know that it's way better to use a smart water bottle. You shouldn't be using that. And uh, yeah, that's just a little anecdotal thing about if you have a piece of gear that gets a ton of hate and the general consensus is don't use it, but you love it, who cares? Just use it. Do what you're gonna do. Now the last thing I'll say when it comes to listening to other backpackers, and this can be an entire topic video all in its own, uh, when it comes to trail conditions, sometimes you just gotta take it with a grain of salt. If you have done your due diligence to plan and prepare and research your route, from time to time, you'll probably encounter that person that tells you about this huge obstacle ahead and you're gonna have to turn back because it's not even worth it. If I had a nickel for every single time that that has happened and it's gotten me so worked up and so anxious about what's ahead on the trail and then it turns out to be nothing. Of course, like I said, there's nothing wrong with sharing information and, you know, generally trying to help other people on the trail, especially if there really is a big obstacle ahead, but also sometimes take it with a grain of salt. When I did Standing Indian Loop last year, I read nothing whatsoever about water crossings. There was a couple of small creeks towards the end, uh, the direction that I went on the loop, but nothing about, you know, fording rivers or any kind of difficult water crossings. I was maybe five miles from the end of my route 
and I encountered some backpackers that said that a guy coming from our opposite direction uh, encountered some really difficult water crossings and you need to take your time and be so careful because if you fall in, like, it's bad enough that you can get seriously hurt or worse. And I was hiking ahead of them and I was worried the whole time that I was gonna encounter this really rough crossing and how, you know, how am I gonna maneuver this with Barrett? And there was nothing. There was like a handful of little tiny creeks that I could get across by hopping on rocks or just literally jumping from one side to the other. But these folks were so worked up and so scared about what some other guy had to say about you need to be really careful and there was no threat, no danger at all. Of course, that, like I said, is a whole nother topic to discuss when it comes to swapping trail information and exaggerating and all of that. Um, but I hope that maybe you found this encouraging today. Uh, there's a lot of loud and abundant opinions out there about the right way to do things and don't make these mistakes. When it comes to gear routines, whatever, that you love and work for you, definitely don't make that mistake of feeling like you have to change it because the general consensus is that it shouldn't be done that way or this piece of gear sucks so you shouldn't use it. If it works for you, hike your own hike, do your thing. I thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you again next time. Tracing my footsteps through the wind Back to a place where I could begin Where do I go? Maybe just don't go hiking. No, that's not an option.